everyone. Welcome back to Morning Cup. I'm so honored today because I have Taylor with me. Taylor is a multi-passionate and has found a way to create business that aligns with those passions. Taylor started her first online business in the foodie space by creating a digital course educating others on how to cook and budget, as well as leading a group and private cooking classes online. Amazing. She recently <laughs> made the shift to coaching others on creating and marketing themselves online. She has a degree in business management and a popular podcast in the business and entrepreneurship space. She is now dedicated to empowering women to get out of their comfort zone, create businesses that align with their vision, and create offers that light them up. Thank you so much for being here today, Taylor. Thank you for having me. It feels so weird when someone like reads the bio that you wrote. I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> You're like, I did that. I did that. <laughs> well, embrace it, embody it. And it's just amazing what you have accomplished. But I'm so curious, how did you get there? I know you have have done so much, but what was that process like for you to get here today? I think I always had like that entrepreneurial spirit because, you know, since I can remember like all through my 20s, the whole like nine to five didn't really like fit me. I originally actually dropped out of college um, my first semester of my junior year and I went to culinary school. So I always wanted, I loved cooking and I just, you know, I was doing my internship for college. I thought I wanted to be a teacher and I love kids. And I was like, this is not going to work for me. I can't do this every single day. This is not the life I want. So then I went to cooking. So I cooked, I did my internship, I traveled, I came home and I started doing like catering, like small catering and started offering cooking classes. Mm -hmm. And that was like my early twenties. And then I, you know, i like I said, multi-passionate. I was a personal trainer. So I had my own clients. I was a nutrition. I had certifications in holistic nutrition. So all of these things started to kind of just happen and unfold and I got really into missionary trips. So I quit my job at 25, mm -hmm. put my life savings, the 25 year old's life savings yeah. into going on a three month mission trip. And I came home and I decided I wanted to go to college and I wanted to get my business degree. And originally it just, was just to start a nonprofit. But then I, as I was in school, I was like, I'm good at this. Like I love business. I love marketing. And I graduated during COVID. I could not find a job. No one wanted to hire me. Everyone was getting laid off. And I got bored. I got depressed. I didn't really know what to do with myself. For the last two years, I had been going to school full-time and working full-time. And now I was just like home all the time. I had nowhere to go, like everyone else in the world. And I started take, I started a food photography online course. So that was my first introduction to an online course. I learned food photography and I started photographing my food, which then led to a blog, which then led to me, which I think this is the big question for everyone who's in business. How do I make money? <laughs> how do I monetize this? Because it was a very time consuming passion. Mm -hmm. And I was giving up shifts because I was waitressing at this point. I was, you know, back to waitressing and I was giving up shifts so I could like take food photos and write up recipes. And so I thought, how can I monetize it? And then I learned, I went back to that course idea, like, okay, this is cool. So long, like this trying to be the shortest possible version of 10 years. <laughs> Basically I got into the course creation I started offering private cooking classes as well as group cooking classes. And I was able to tie in. So those group cooking classes, I partnered with different charities and I gave 10%. Mm -hmm. So I got to teach people how to cook. I got to donate to charities. And then I got to learn how to interact online with so many different types of people. Absolutely. Wow. What a whirlwind of 10 years Sorry. wrapped into one. I love that though, because it just shows too, things don't happen overnight. It is such a no. process, the ups, downs. And I love that you took, went back to the course you had taken because a lot of times it's the experiences we go through that really lead us to those paths. But 
being able to create something on your own. And I love the fact that you donated 10% to what you earned to charity because I think there's a lot more business models that do that, but because of your mission trip and also other factors in your life that led to that too, it's just, it's full circle. It's encompassing everything that you loved. At least that's what it sounds like to me. <laughs> I'm sure mm -hmm. others too. Um, but I'm curious, what were some of like the roadblocks of creating the course, even though you had taken one and like building it on your own, what was that experience like for you? It was like the first initial question is how does someone do this? How <laughs> do I, I'm not a tech person. How do I even go about this idea? What can I sell? You know, it really, because I had so many passions, you know, which space did I want to stay in? What did I want to do? So really getting clear with what is my niche, you know, who are my target, who's my target audience right. and then learning the technology behind it, you know, how is it going to be, you know, cause the person that I did has a whole team. So like that was the only course I had originally seen at the time. Like, right. so I'm like, do I need a whole team? Like I'm just starting out. I'm like, I'm in the red right now. Like I'm making no money. I'm in debt because of this. Like mm -hmm. how do I go about doing this on my own? So mm -hmm. it's a little bit of getting scrappy. And I think a lot of business owners, when you first get started, be willing to be scrappy because you don't need the $150, you know, actually that's cheap, probably $400 <laughs> camera. You don't yeah. need all of these fancy equipment, you know, just show up and get started. Uh, well said. It's so true. It's being able to just show up, put yourself out there too. And not everything's going to stick. It's not always going to be award-winning like program or course or anything along those lines, the first round, but it's doing the work. And I love that he's the word scrappy because it, it feels like that. You're like pulling at strings. You're in the red. Everyone's like, oh, wow, you have this beautiful business, but they don't know all the back end <laughs> that goes mm -hmm. into it. And it is just showing up. It is using your resources and being able to do that to move forward. So once you started, you built your course. And I love that you also mentioned that you're not techie because a lot of people are like, I need to be techie to get this started. What did you do to really take those steps to continue to build it? So the idea came in August or September. I was like, I really want to do a course. Mm -hmm. When I say you have to like keep pushing forward, I did not actually do it until January. Mm -hmm. I, it, because you have to just get over the fact that it's going to be perfect. You don't have a 10 person team. You don't have a videographer. You are your videographer. You are your editor. You are your producer. So mm -hmm. You know, people going into an online business, I think, you know, it's not like a brick and mortar. You don't have to, you don't have to invest 20,000 to 500 plus thousand, mm -hmm. but you do need to be willing to pivot and learn. So for me, it was, how do I teach people how to cook on a course like that? Never, never done that one before, but mm -hmm. I also really love the finance aspect and budgeting and meal planning. You know, so it was kind of this back and forth. So I did a lot of market research and I highly, highly recommend it. And I did it in a way that felt good to me. Um, like I was in a lot of Facebook groups with women and I would straight up say, you know, because most of them had to get through an admin. And I was mm -hmm. like, I will not DM a single person. I am truly doing market research. And this is my question. Mm -hmm. And I had like three questions and it was hard. I mean, you know, there are, when you're a new business owner, you're like, oh my God, that's my dream client. But I've made a promise to myself and I made a promise to them that I would not DM them. And once people realize like this girl is not going to sell me anything because I had nothing to sell. Mm -hmm. I was able to get hundreds and hundreds of women's mm -hmm. feedback over about a six to eight week period. Wow. That is incredible. I love that you also, it goes back to being resourceful, being able to use Facebook groups because there are so many incredible ones. That's how we met. Um, yeah. But being able to really just reach out and being so transparent too of this is what I'm doing. This is the market research. And that is so key because you can build an amazing course that you're like, this is perfect. Everyone's going to love it. But if it's not what people want, it's not going to sell. And that's such a key element that you said, the market research in order to build the the data to create that. So I'm curious, once you created all that data with all the people that had reached out, because that's a significant amount of people that responded, 
what was that next step after in January is when you said you started to launch it or started to actually put it into play? Both. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, so I was supposed to start building in December. I got mm-hmm. COVID. I was really sick. So I didn't want to push my launch back any further. I was like, enough's enough. I'm going yeah. for it. Yeah. So I was building and launching at the same time, which I don't recommend. I think, mm-hmm. um, because I wasn't able to put a hundred percent into each aspect and, Mm -hmm. but it worked. So Mm -hmm. I start, I had my outline. So I knew what my modules were going to be. I knew what I was going to teach. Like once I had that ready to go, I started doing like a launch runway. So I started making a lot of content Mm -hmm. all about what I was going to sell. Like they didn't know I was selling soon, but I knew I was selling soon. So I was really like, like leaning into it. Yeah. So started doing that. I started being very educational, which is how I wanted to show up anyways, but I was very um, intentional with the education I wanted to provide. Mm -hmm. And then I, I went for it. You know, I, I did a webinar. I did a free webinar. I got people to sign up. I gave out the replays. I, and then I launched it. So I, so that, that's the nut, the quick version of that. (laughs) And it's being strategic. And I know you had mentioned too, I love that you brought together your love for teaching because that's originally what you thought you were going to do. And then the fact that you loved cooking and the marketing piece, you really loved marketing like what you're talking about, but bringing all three of those together and being able to be strategic about having all the content out there, start building that, building the foundation for people to build upon. So they're getting to know you, they're getting to know the material and then being able to do the webinar too, having that out there and the replays is so important too, because not everyone can be there right then and there live. Um, but being able to find ways to continue to market, to find your ideal client, but also the amount of people you're helping, especially around cooking. It's something like I used to absolutely despise up until like January. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, now I have a whole cooking segment. But I think too, it's just your point is really just taking it step by step, but sometimes it's not exactly how you plan and that's okay. So I'm curious if you were to do it all over again, what would you do differently or would you do anything differently? Uh, I love questions like this. Like (laughs) I'm content with how it happened, but if I could go back, if I was, you know, and this is what I like, cause now I like mentor people in businessing Mm and starting businesses start sooner, just kind of go for it you know Mm -hmm. it's good to have strategy and it's good to have vision but like you need to just drop that perfectionist mindset over it I would have you know I probably would have done a founder's launch in October which is what I originally wanted to do and I chickened out last minute and um I would have done that. I would have started getting the testimonials. I probably would have upped the price a little bit by January. So there's a few different things I would have done, you know, Mm -hmm. but I would definitely say start sooner, you know, and start, you know, I don't care if you have 50 followers or 50,000 followers, nurture your audience. You know, Mm -hmm. you cannot sell to a cold audience. You cannot sell to people who don't like you, who don't know you, who don't feel comfortable around you. So continue to nurture your audience. Um, like I said, I probably would have launched done like a founder's launch Mm -hmm. and then nurtured my audience for a couple of months with other, you know, free offers or keep pushing my cooking classes, stuff like that before Mm -hmm. launching a full-blown course. If I was to do it again, I would just have been more patient. Well, I would have jumped on it and also been more patient with the nurturing aspect. Yes. It's like a double-edged sword because you're like trying to like move fast, but you also have to be patient with the process because like we were saying earlier, nothing happens overnight. It does take time to build, but I love that you're like, just start because if you don't start, it's going to continue to go the back burner and not be able to fulfill the dreams that you're trying to accomplish, whatever that is in business. Um, So I'm curious with your journey, has there been any roadblocks in the last few years, as you've been growing your business, um, that have maybe you thought you were going to throw in the towel, but you pushed through. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so last summer when I started the blog, mm-hmm. I absolutely hated blogging, by the way. I <laughs> love my podcast. I love sharing recipes, having to write an SEO friendly 
recipe. I'm like, how many words can I write about a recipe? Like, it's good. (laughs) Try it. So that part was really frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. And then also, you know, the naive mind was, I can start monetizing this right away. Like I'm putting so much effort into it. I should be making money, which is smart. You should be making money and anything that you're putting a lot of effort into, anything that you are passionate about can be monetized. But I didn't know anything about this world. Like I was, I am the true example of like one step at a time, like (laughs) Google, you know, I graduated from Google basically. (laughs) I had no idea what I was doing. Even with Mm -hmm. a business background, you, they don't teach you the steps. They don't teach you like, you know, what you learn in marketing. I learned, I went, I took an international marketing class. It is nothing like international marketing online, like totally different. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I, I was frustrated because like I said, I, I was, I made my whole schedule around. I purposely did not get a job at this time besides waitressing. So I could work on this blog but it takes years to monetize just a blog, like mm-hmm. years. Like you need to have tens of thousands of visitors a day on your site to make ad money. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. So it was, I got frustrated. You know, like I said, I was in the red at mm-hmm. times um, until I launched my course. You know, my cooking classes were kind, were, were helping. They, they started bringing in the first bit of money, but you know, until I launched a course, mm-hmm. I was in the red and I was discouraged and I was tired and I was working so hard. And, you know, you're a solo entrepreneur. You're wearing 10 hats. I was my assistant. I was answering emails. I also had launched the podcast. Like I had my hand in way too many cookie jars or whatever that saying is. <laughs> <laughs> no, you absolutely were. And that's that's part of entrepreneurship in the beginning because you are figuring things out and it's great to figure those out and then be able to delegate it because you also know if somebody's not doing it the way you need it to be done as well. But I'm curious. So being able to recognize that too, because it does take us a little bit longer in certain things than we think we're like, Oh, happen like within a few months or these things. I thought that too, so many times and it still happens. (laughs) I'm not immune to it. Um, But I'm curious with your podcast because you started it once you had already started the blog, tell us a little bit more about your podcast and what that experience has been like for you. I love the podcast. I have so much fun doing it. I always have women guests on. It's either a solo. I try to alternate between solo and guest expert because I'm not an expert in everything. Like, and I would rather, instead of me talking about a topic that I don't know about, I like to bring in guest experts who then, you know, most of them are business owners or Mm -hmm. um, most of them are business owners, but they come on and I get to commu- I get to build a community with them. You know, I'm naturally an introvert. I'm naturally shy, but I also have this side of me that's like, I can do that. I can do that for an hour. I can go talk to someone and then, you know, have some quiet time after. So yeah. the podcast is fun because I get to talk about business. I get to talk. I mean, I had someone on who was telling me how to eat for my menstrual cycle because I was like, that's cool. Yeah. Women don't know that. Like that, that's something I never knew about. So, I mean, it's a, it's a wide variety. Most of the time it is, has a business focus an entrepreneurship focus, mm-hmm. but it's called girl. It's time to thrive. And it's because we need to, there's so many different aspects to women I, you are a mom, you are a business owner, you are a single parent, you are a single woman, you are, you know, working three jobs, like you still deserve to learn something about how you can better yourself. So I, I loved it. And I became much more passionate about it. You know, editing my podcast first editing a blog post probably took about the same amount of time, but I was miserable editing a blog post as opposed to editing a podcast episode. Yes, very different. At least you have a little interaction with the podcast versus yes. like it's just words on a blog um, and pictures maybe. But I love that like you were able to take that and apply it of understanding what makes you thrive, but what also lights you up. Because I know you have multiple things you're passionate about but really diving into the podcast, what was that like starting in the sense of like all the back end stuff? So if somebody is interested in starting a podcast, maybe they can get a little glimpse of it if they've already yeah. Googled. <laughs> so, um, excuse me. So starting a podcast, 
it seems so much scarier than it really is. Once you start doing it, you're like, this is pretty easy. Um, if you have a MacBook, GarageBand is completely free. Um, if you don't, I want to say it's OBS. You can have that. That's a free, um, free one as well. So there's a few different editing tools where you can record and edit completely for free. So try one of those, you know, before you invest. Um, like I said, I'm scrappy. I'm going to do everything I can before I'm investing lots and lots of money into something. Yeah. Um, I bought a microphone for $60 on Amazon. Maybe I'll upgrade it soon, but it works just fine for now. Mm -hmm. I then decided, what is my niche? And for me, it is kind of broad. It's a little bit broad, broader than it probably could be or should be. But like at the same time, I believe that we have so many different aspects of us. Like mm -hmm. I don't want to be niche down. This is more of a passion project. If it makes money, great. If it doesn't, mm -hmm. so be it. You know, this wasn't something that I went into with, I need to make money or mm -hmm. I'm a failure at a podcast. I was like, this was a way for me to give women a voice, give them a place to speak freely about their businesses without competition, with that sisterhood, with that, um, just that kind of love and safety. Mm -hmm. So I decided what I was going to talk about it. I named it and kind of like the the course, I just went for it. Like I had thought about this for years and I finally just like ripped the bandaid off. The mic came in and I recorded and I sucked and I was so bad, <laughs> so bad. I had a full blown like essay that I was reading off of to start because I was so nervous, but then I kept doing it and then I kept practicing and, you know, also sharing it on everywhere. I had to get over the fear of like, just fear of others, mm -hmm. share it. So, mm -hmm. um, and then also there's a lot of great podcast editors out there. I don't mind editing my podcast. It is something I'm going to be outsourcing pretty soon, but for the last like six months to make sure that I wanted to commit to it, I did edit it myself. Am I the best editor in the world? Absolutely not. But like I said, on GarageBand, there are thousands of YouTube videos that will show you what to do. I do very basic editing and it works. So see if you like it. Don't invest thousands of dollars in it unless you are like, this is me, this is for me, but you can just dabble with it. And then I use Libsyn. Mm. So I started with Anchor. It was free. I did not like the way that it did the analytics. So analytics are super important if you have a podcast. I try not, to, I don't check every day, but I check every week. So you want to make sure, is it being downloaded? Is it being listened to? Like, what is the listen rate? Uh, is it international? Like, am I reaching other countries? So all of this is really good information. So I use Libsyn and then, so that's a host. So sorry for those who don't know, Libsyn is a host. So it will share it to Spotify, Google podcasts, Apple, like it'll share it everywhere. So I just have to upload it one time for it to be shared to multiple different podcasts. Mm -hmm. The only thing is Apple. So if you want it to be on an Apple podcast, it is $20 for the year. Hmm. For me, that's a no brainer. It's very easy. $20 to be on an Apple, to be on Apple podcast. So I had to actually buy the $20, spend the money on that to be able to um, share it on Apple. But then you get like a code and then I was able to put that into Libsyn. So I still only go to Libsyn. I write oh. my show notes, I write my title, I upload the audio, and when I schedule it, and the next day, you know, it's usually on Monday, and I have a podcast that airs on Tuesday, so the next day, <laughs> it's out there, and it's on all, the, it's in all of the places, any place that there is a podcast, there's, there's mine, mm -hmm. so yeah, so I spend $15 a month on Libsyn, like I said, I started with Anchor until I knew I liked it, and then I upgraded to Libsyn. Mm -hmm. I hope that it's helps. Like, <laughs> definitely. And it's trial and error, right? Like it's being able to see things that if you want to continue to do it, it's going to take consistency, but also giving yourself that patience and grace with that process as well. But there's so many resources, like you just mentioned too, that you can, and it's very easy to get started. It's just 
wanting to get started. And at first it's scary. It's so scary. But I remember doing my first like live. I was like, oh, that was rough. But like, it's gotten better over time, <laughs> thankfully. <laughs> I haven't been flagged. So I guess we're in a good range. <laughs> but I think for you too, like just even starting with that initial podcast episode and like reading from the like essay that you had written to like kind of calm the nerves, you still did it. And I think that's the beautiful thing. It's everybody starts somewhere. You're not an expert right away. You build mm -hmm. up that knowledge base. And I love what your podcast is about too, because that's what it's about here as well. Women empowerment, being able to share stories and the amazing journeys other women are on, but really being able to pull in the experts too of different topics, because it just makes it so much more multifaceted of what you have to offer your listeners. And I think that's what it's about. It's being able to just get these amazing messages out there. So I'm curious with your whole journey so far, what has been maybe like one or two aha moments along the journey that you're like, yes, I'm on the right track or yes, this is exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. So believe it or not, I got mm -hmm. burnt out after launching my course because I was <laughs> launching and building it at the same time. I know crazy. How could I have crazy. gone burnt out doing <laughs> everything? <laughs> so in February, I took a break from the podcast. I knew I was going back to it. I had actually had episodes planned. I just took a break from everything. I just, I showed up on social media. I wasn't like, I didn't ghost anybody. I just was like mental break. And then people kept coming to me and being like, Taylor, how did you start a course? Like you're like, you went from food blogging to creating a course because in the food space, um, especially mm -hmm. social media, your options for creating money is food photography, sponsored post, or wait for that ad revenue to come in. Those are your biggest options. Mm. And these were very talented chefs who, if they were to work a normal job, like I said, I've, I've worked in the restaurant industry. I've worked there since I was 16. So mm. chefs work like 60, 70 hours a week and they make no money. So these are talented mm. chefs who have now taken you know, most of them came from my food photography course, like the community. And they're like, we don't want to go back to the restaurant industry post COVID. We don't want to do this. How did you make money? And I was like, oh, I'll tell you. I'm like, here you go. I created a course. I did this, this, and this. I downloaded, I paid for Kajabi and all oh, there's other ones too. If you don't want to do that, and that kept happening. And that was all of February. And so in March, I started, I went back to my charity cooking classes. I did all of that and it felt different this time. Mm -hmm. So in April, I started, well, actually in January I started, but in April, after months of doing a lot of business vision work, you know, what did I want for my business? What was the long-term thing? Mm -hmm. How could my main goal of helping women, how does that tie in? And in I ended up pivoting. And so I still love food. I still share stuff on my stories and stuff like that, but I ended up pivoting to doing um, business mentoring from like a holistic standpoint, from like marketing strategy to that vision and that mindset. So you really know what you want going into it. So you don't have to pivot as much as I have in the last year. But um, that was my aha moment was like, oh my gosh. There are so many people like that. I was having more people reach out to me about business mentoring mm. than the actual cooking course. Cause I had so many other people who loved food following me. They didn't need a cooking course. Right. So, right. um, but I still have my cooking course up there. So I still have the people and it's an evergreen thing. And, mm -hmm. um, so I still get to do all of that. And then I, um, so yeah, that was my big aha moment was I, I rested I took time for myself. I journaled until I realized like, what is it that absolutely lights me up? Like, what can I, what can I see myself doing? Because this whole pivoting thing, mm -hmm. I can't do this every six months for the rest of my life. It's exhausting. Yes. <laughs> I'm really glad you brought up the burnout factor because we talk about that a lot on here. And like, I had my own burnout story as well, but I think I love that you took that step back and you were reevaluating things, giving yourself a moment to rest because a lot of times it's like, okay, what's the next thing? What's the next thing? This isn't working. Let's try this. Or even if we need a break, sometimes we just push through it 
But I I just want to acknowledge that you did take that step back and really giving yourself that time and energy to refuel. So you could be recharged and ready to go and do something else and having those moments of journaling and the vision, creating that vision. And also all those people coming to you too, because it's just a sign of you're good at it. And also people are looking to you of like, oh, she's been through this already. Let's go to Taylor. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's so important to just recognize too. Sometimes the doors just start flying open when you're on that right track as well. And that's what I'm kind of hearing from you as well, where it's just being open to it and being able to receive it to move forward. So I'm curious with all the pivoting, if somebody is in that stage of pivoting, what are some like one or two tips or maybe even three that you could give somebody that is in that pivot mode right now? Yeah. So if you are pivoting, (laughs) you definitely need to pause. Mm -hmm. You cannot pivot back and forth and back and forth. Like you are not going to make a clear, strong decision if you're on go mode. So you actually need to sit back and pause. You know, I know social media moves fast, but it's not going anywhere. Not anywhere soon. So see what your boundaries are. If, like for me, I was still showing up on social media. I was still posting food pictures, but I stopped blogging. I took a, I didn't post a single podcast episode. Uh, I, I paused, but I didn't want to be forgotten about. So I did show up. So see where you're at. Because for some people, it could be two weeks of just like ghost mode. I'm doing nothing. Mm-hmm. But So pause is my first tip. Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to journaling, actually, I did a free class on this and I'll share it here. When you do your vision, for me, it took me so long to even know what, like, I'm like, what is this business vision? Like, Mm because it just was really strong in my heart to keep like reaching and keep doing. One, the first question I want you to ask yourself, and you have to be super honest with yourself is what are you afraid of? Mm. What fears hold you back? What are your limiting beliefs? Like all wrapped in one. Like, what is that? Because once you know what you're afraid of, you can be like, oh, like that's not that bad. If you keep it in the dark, it has power over you. But if you bring it to the light, you have power over it. So that would be my second tip is what are you afraid of? What it, what limiting beliefs do you have? And then third, what is your ideal workday look like? Who do you work with? Who do you talk to? Do you work by yourself? Do you work five hours a day? Do you work 10 hours a day? Like, what does your ideal work week look like or day, however you want to break it down? And once you, and like, I mean, be as detailed as possible, possible, visualize those clients. Do you even have clients? Do you just sell courses? Do you, uh, you know, do one-on-one? Do you do interviews like what Caroline, Dr. Caroline and I are doing? What does it look like? What part of the day lights you up? What part of the day doesn't? And once you start getting more clear with all that stuff, then you're able to start thinking more clearly. You're able to see like, actually, this really lights me up. This doesn't light me up as much. Okay. Well, if this, you know, like if it's marketing, well, you still need to market your business, but can you outsource it? Or can you, you know, what can you do? Like, like just do where it doesn't overcomplicate it. So start getting clear with what you want in your business for the future. Oh, wise words. That was so great. Thank you, Taylor. You're <laughs> welcome. Sure people can just like write those down too and really envision that so you can have that clear direction. But I think those are beautiful questions and it really can drive home what they're trying to accomplish as well. But I've been having so much fun with this conversation, Taylor. We're going to jump into the rapid fire questions if you're ready All for right. that. <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> okay. The first question is, who is your hero? Um. My mom. Yeah, she's my hero. Moms are the best. (laughs) They are. They really are. They just get it, you know? I call her every single day. If she doesn't answer, I think she's dead. (laughs) Yeah, no. She's avoiding me. (laughs) She's like, I just, I'll call you right back. She might be in the bathroom. (laughs) Give her at least five minutes, you know? (laughs) Uh, What motivates you to work smarter? Not getting burnt out again. Mm-hmm. I would agree with that. It's a good way <laughs> not to break yes. out again. <laughs> if you were a superhero, what would be your powers or power? This was a hard one. I saw this written out and I was like, oh my gosh. Um, teleport? Like I would yeah. just love to teleport. 
I, I completely agree with you. You don't have to deal with all the lines and the frustration or yeah. flights being canceled, which has been happening. <laughs> yeah. I just want to get where I want to be. Exactly. It's a very popular answer because I feel like it's in the mix of being created right now <laughs> as we speak. Um, if you could share a meal with any four individuals, living or dead, who would they be? Okay. This was a really tough one. Four yeah. individuals. Yeah. There is a business coach named Melanie Ann Lair. I would totally sit down with her. Um, there is, they're all four very different. So this is going to show so many different sides to me. Love it. Um, so that would be one. Mm -hmm. Two would probably be Lisa Bevere. She's a Christian author who really helped change my like young 20s when I was struggling with stuff. Mm -hmm. Three... Um, uh, what is that chef's name? Well, I'll go with Ina Garten because I, mm -hmm. that's my food person. And mm -hmm. then Guy Fieri, another food person. Yeah. It would be the most interesting meal ever. I believe it. Just the dynamic of all the different personalities, backgrounds. <laughs> I would definitely like to be a fly on the wall. <laughs> it would be very interesting. I would say the least. <laughs> what is the most daring thing that you've ever done? Uh, oh my, I kind of too. Uh, yeah. I will. All right. I went on a month long mission trip to Thailand and Cambodia completely by myself. I wouldn't met people that I didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, and I snuck into the brothels to uh encourage the girls Aww. and till someone had a gun and told me to leave <laughs> that'd be the most daring thing I've ever done ah, just, my heart was racing a little for that one <laughs> I'm glad you survived and that sounds very daring but I'm sure those girls really appreciated you being there and speaking to them yeah. what <laughs> what is the phone app that you use the most Instagram. That's a good one. <laughs> and what is the last book that you've read recently? I haven't finished it yet, but it is the new Ed Millett book, The Power of One More. So it's kind of like oh. a self, it's kind of like, um, it's like a mindset book, encouraging. I'm almost done with it. And that's a really, mm -hmm. I, I would say I'm so close to being done with it. That, that would be almost the last one. It sounds like a good read. It's definitely. It is a very good read. So if you were to have a movie about your life thus far, who would play you? Oh God. Um, <laughs> I don't even know anyone, any celebrities names. Uh, what is her name? What is her name? Do you know what she's been in? I almost want to say. No, it's not Blake Lively. She's a cute little, she's a blonde that makes me laugh. You know what? We'll go with um, Jennifer Lawrence because uh, she's very awkward and hilarious. And so am I <laughs> sometimes. <perfect> <laughs> I love it. And she's a fantastic actress. <laughs> yes. What is your favorite family recipe, whether it's traditional or you just love making it together or something maybe you've created? <laughs> lasagna I love to make lasagna growing up I made it my dad would make the sauce and I would do all the rest of it and now I do all of it but I make like five to eight pounds of it at once and I serve everybody I know with it it's very kind of you and I'm sure <laughs> yes. everyone can't wait to have it <laughs> yes <laughs> that's amazing very kind of you um so if you were to be an animal personality type and whatnot what animal would you be a dolphin a dolphin why a dolphin they are super friendly they love to just like be playful they're in the ocean I'm obsessed I love to swim swimming is my like my therapy um and they stick to their pack. They love their family. They travel together. So, so I would say a dolphin. It's a good choice. 
I could see that. <laughs> um, so if you have a day off, you're not creating anything, you're just having time for yourself. What is your favorite way to spend that day off? Depends on the season because we have four cold, we have four different seasons here in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Summer, I want to be on a beach. Mm-hmm. I just want to read. I just want to, I absolutely love my alone time. Mm-hmm. Or in like spring or fall. I want to hike. I love to hike a mountain. Don't normally do that one completely by myself, but that is like my therapy. Yes. It's so therapeutic. Just being on top of the mountain, you see like your problems are so much smaller, you know? Yep. Exactly. (laughs) Same, same. (laughs) Um, So what is something an outsider wouldn't know about your industry? To be an entrepreneur because this is what I used to think you needed to, I used to think you needed to have the most best, incredible strategy in the entire world. Mm -hmm. Now I would say that an outsider who doesn't know much about, you know, an entrepreneurship, I I would say you really need a strong mindset Mm -hmm. because if you don't have it, you're going to quit. And if you quit, that's the only way you fail have said better myself. (laughs) It's very true because it is that mindset. It is that factor. If you quit, then you failed, but you're going to have the bumps bumps in the road. It's going to pivot a lot. But once you find that road, you keep going and you might hit a couple speed bumps, but that's part of the process. Absolutely. Well, Taylor, thank you so much for coming on. But before I let you go, where can people find you, hire you and have your services? So my last name is kind of hard, but I, my Instagram is uh, at Taylor Squellia. So the last name is S-Q-U-E-G-L-I-A, but you can find me there. You can send me a DM. You can also link in the bio instead of telling you a million different places is all the ways that you can work with me. I do a live group coaching program um, that launches again in the end of summer. I do one-on-one mentorships. I do business intensives. And I have lots of freebies as well. And then I have Girl, It Is Time to Thrive. It is a podcast. Like I said before, you can find it on Apple, Spotify, anywhere you listen to a podcast, you can find it. But yeah, you just send me an Instagram DM. I'm, I check my request every single day. I'm always responding back to people. And I love to hear from people and just connect. So Awesome. Well, we'll definitely link all of those below. So you can just click right there and go connect with Taylor. But thank you so much, Taylor, for taking the time today to just being so transparent of your experience and everything you've gone through. I'm sure it's going to help so many people, even if it just helps that one person. I know it's going to help a lot. But thank you again for taking the time and just sharing your truth. (laughs) Thank you so much for having me. This has been fun. Likewise. Absolutely. Well, we're so glad to have you on and make sure to like subscribe and comment below. What was the biggest takeaway from Taylor? What did you learn about pivoting maybe or anything else that you learned? I'm sure she would love to see it too. And we'll see you on the next video.